All right, so let's get started on the third gen cat fuel filter swap. Um, this one is different than the fourth gen um, with a few things. So if you're looking at a fourth gen, there's multiple videos for you. If you're doing this on a third gen, um, I'm pretty sure I'm the only video. Um, so let's get started. First things you would want to do is um, drain the fluid, or sorry, the fuel from the original fuel filter. Um, mine broke last time that I did this. This is my second time doing this on this truck um, due to unforeseen things. So um, I will throw the clip in from my first time doing it here. Alright, as you can see, we got the fuel draining out. And it's coming from this up here, this valve. So you have to push in and unscrew it. And then when you let go of it, it'll start draining out like that. So once that stops, then we can move on. Okay, so now that you have drained the fluid, um, what you're going to want to do, and it's super simple and it'll save a lot of like constraints and all that um, is remove this or not remove but loosen that and that clamp um, and you're gonna move this boot basically it's gonna turn and be out of the way um, that way you can get your arm in there because um, it's tight back here uh, it really is and it'll help you with all those all those bolts and everything like that so um let me do that and then i'll check back in actually before we get started there's a few things i want to go over with you guys so um why do you want to do the swap to a cat filter um simple honestly um so at least on the third gens all you have is the fuel filter so it's not really that bad um Usually, I think the filter costs somewhere around like 50 bucks or something like that if you go and get it through the dealership. Um, but uh, for the later models, you have the fuel filter, you have the water and fuel filter. Um, so there, there's more and it gets more expensive. So, um, you know, at least with the third gen's minimum, each oil change, you're going to be paying 50 some bucks for that filter if you do it yourself. Um, meanwhile, if you look it up, these Cat 1R0750 filters, about 20 bucks. So, um, I mean, just within a couple oil changes, you've basically paid the kit off already, just in price difference. Um, so, that's one big thing. Um, another big thing with this is, so, the original fuel filter is a cartridge style. So, what, me what that means is there's like a plastic cup and there's a paper filter that goes inside. So you have to remove the cup, remove the, the filter, put the new one in, screw it back on. Well, those like to crack because of the heat from the motor and then when it cools down, especially if you live in the Midwest, um, you get extreme cold in the winter and then humid heat in the summer, mix that with the heat of a diesel motor and it becomes extremely brittle. Case in point, my drain broke on the last time I was going to do this swap. So that housing, I want to say, is like a hundred and something bucks through the dealership. So, you know, if I went to the dealership right now just to get the housing and the filter, I would spend probably, with tax, 160 to 180 dollars just for one, just for the housing and the filter. This whole kit, everything included that you need, was, I believe, $200. So basically, just for the housing and one filter, it basically almost pays off for this kit. And then my fuel filters are only $20 after that. So that's part of the reason why. Um, so, And it's also a higher particulate filter. So what means is it's going to... Um, filter everything out better than what the factory one would so I wanted to get that out of the way the other thing the other thing that I did um, notice the last time that I was doing this um, 
it is a lot easier so these two actually come as two separate pieces um, what I did was um, I put this piece in and then tried putting this piece on there is a banjo fitting on the CP3 um, so basically um, if you try and do it that way you have to take that banjo fitting out and with that you have a chance of losing one of those banjo um, crush washers and if you lose that it's gonna piss fe uh, diesel fuel everywhere ask me I already know that's what happened last time so I would put these two together before you put it on that way you don't have to put take that banjo fitting off the CP3 um, so that'll save you a headache and again I will repeat it again do not lose any of the banjo fitting um, washers because even if you're like eh, it's alright it's just one washer no it will piss diesel fuel everywhere um, so just take that warning keep track of all your banjo fitting washers and they're like I want to say like eight or ten dollars a piece so they're not cheap for a metal washer so um, let me get some things going and we'll uh, get started okay so now that we've got it off you loosen that and then you can spin that down you get all that room next right here um, there's a fuel line that goes from here to right here it's just a squeeze clip and it comes off um, there will be a little bit of fuel but it's this piece right here um, next what we are gonna do um, it's up to you um, I'm probably just gonna remove this uh, unscrewing I believe it's a 17 um, then what we'll do is unplug this Let's see if you can see it I'm gonna unplug that this is going to stay unplugged uh, there's nothing to plug back in for the next one also down here you have the water and fuel sensor that needs to get unplugged as well so that's unplugged um, so what are we going to need to do over here um, there is a banjo fitting it's hard to see a lot of this uh, because it's so cramped in here but there is a banjo fitting right here which also has another squeeze fuel line um, so yeah you just squeeze it pull it off and basically just put it out of the way um, that's also a 17 now you have one banjo right here if you feel to the left of that there's another 17 right there you have to get both otherwise it will not come off do not lose these banjo fitting washers these are the easiest to lose and that's what I lost and it pissed fuel everywhere so um, make sure you get both of these the washers for both there's one on there's actually two there's one on the bolt end and there's one on the um, other side of the banjo so there's two four six total um, I'm gonna start getting some of these off and uh, and then I'll check back in with you okay so I've got the old um, housing out so here's the front and I wanted to show you the back so as you can see there's a fitting there as well as there um, that is the fuel bowl delete basically that we're going to be doing um, that's what that tube is for so uh, so it's this line right here this is your fuel supply line uh, do not get those mixed up Um, these are the two from the back that we removed. They're both the same size and thread pitch, um, but I just would suggest not mixing them up. Okay, so what I wanted to show you was here was that delete tube. It's 
So it's on there. Um, all four uh, banjo fittings and washers are in there. Um, so the only one we have left is down here. It's the fuel supply line. This is for, like I told you, is for the CP3. Now if you see what I mean here about this banjo bolt, um, you have to remove that to tighten this. That's why I had both of them tightened together already. So all I needed to do was screw it in and with this uh, 17 and if you have a thin enough 17 like I do, it fits right on there. This one, you do want to make sure it is pretty tight. As for these two, with this, because this is aluminum uh, and the bolts are steel, the banjo bolts are steel, they will strip out the threads in that aluminum. So you want to make sure it's tight, but don't go nuts with it. You will strip out those threads. Um, next, we'll get the cap filter in here. It will. It will bolt right here and right here. Um, they do have bolts supplied with it. Um, it's up to you if you want to bolt this on first or bolt the filter on first. I'm probably going to put the filter on and then I'll do this. Don't forget to take your water and fuel sensor off. It's right in the bottom there. It will go into this hole right there um, remember it's just hand tight you don't need to crank it down in there um, it's not going to get a lot of pressure it's just hand tight that's all you need otherwise you'll break it and you don't want that all right so pretty much we're just about done um, just wanted to point out a last couple things um, as you're going through just double check make sure so again this screws in here, it's a 17 and an 18. Make sure those are put together. Um, this line right here from this banjo needs to clip on to that other end. It's one of those clip style, as you can see there. And that clips in to where this tube is. Um, the fuel supply goes on the back there. Your water and fuel, don't forget to plug that back in. And then here is your supply line. Make sure that's tight, that's an 18. These are both 13s up here. Um, this, again, will not clip into anything. Um, the last things we need to do to button this up are just the intake tube. Um, just turn it back up, put the clamp on, tighten that, tighten the front. Um, and then when you go to start it, uh, you just have to prime it a couple times to fill the filter up and then she'll start. So um, let me uh, finish up these last couple things and then we'll go start her up. Just one last thing. Um, when you do get everything bolted up, I would do just a simple rinse down just to make sure you get any of that excess fuel. Um, just get it out because um, I know these trucks are kind of known for lighting on fire. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if there's like, you know, something that happens that does it, but I'd rather not take the chance. So um, just rinse everything down um, if you would like. And let's go start it. Just like I said, uh, make sure to cycle the key a few times. Um, it'll probably still take a minute to start, um, but let's see. Okay. With that, that's pretty much it. You're all set. Um, so, I mean, it's a pretty easy job to do. There's just those very specific things to look out for. Um, it'll make make it a real headache so uh, just do everything that I said um, watch out for what I said and it'll go smooth so um, that's that and uh, catch you next time